Looking to sell your home? Not sure if this is the right time or where even to start. What about all the repairs? Today we learn what you need to fix and what you can leave alone. You may be thinking spring, but it doesn't hurt to have summer on the mind. Why now is the time to have a cooling system installed in your home if you don't have one already? It's been a problem here on the peninsula for as long as we can remember. Feral cats, it seems like they're everywhere. What a local organization is trying to do to contain the problem and what you can do to help. And we're in the kitchen with the self-proclaimed bossy Italian wife. Delmarva Life starts right now. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Lisa Bryant. I'd like to say that I didn't call her that. That's what she calls herself. <laughs> Clarify that. A little disclaimer right, right there at the top, the top of the top. show. I'm Jimmy Hoppe. Welcome to Marble Live from Historic Studio D. Yeah. Uh, boy, uh, I'm, I'm learning more and more about women's NCAA mm -hmm. than I knew before. Uh, I, I found out that uh, UD was a sixth seed, which I didn't realize. Uh -huh. I knew they beat West Virginia. Yeah. I didn't realize what a huge game this was uh -huh. that they just got. And man, they are moving forward. Uh, Elena Deladon, she got her 3,000th point in the game. Uh, they're moving on to the Sweet 16. Yeah. Did you know Scott Abraham had this this morning? This absolutely astonished me. She uh, was offered, she, when she was in the seventh grade, mm -hmm. um, she was at a basketball camp run by North Carolina head coach Sylvia Hatchell. Mm -hmm. um, the coach, Hatchell, was so impressed, she offered Deladon a scholarship right then and there. In seventh grade. In seventh grade. She, uh, Deladon said no. And that's who she's going to face when they play. Oh, really? She is and now it's the same be, coach? It's the same coach. They're going to be uh, facing the Tar Heels in the second round in NCAA. And uh, now Coach Hatchell's going to be there. And that boy, what has that got to be like? Yeah. Absolutely well, incredible. good for them. I'm proud of them. Three out the 3,000th point, only the ninth player in NCAA history to reach that mark. Wow. Absolutely. Oh, and by the way, Vice President Joe Biden was at the game. That's Take right. There Take a look. There he is. Right Watch the middle the game. Waiting. There he is. Huh? He's proud of them too. I think everybody is. I know <laughs> our producer Annie is. I wonder. I wonder if it's if it makes a difference. I mean, did they know he's out in the crowd? You know, do you put that out of your head? The VP here is here. Forget it, forget it. They had to have known because of all the Secret Service. That would give it away. Yes. You know, the guys I, talking into their wrists. I think you. <laughs> I don't Who's know. here? Oh, he's over there. <laughs> um, you know, every now and then I like to pick out a letter from the Grapevine in, in the Daily Times, the anonymous <laughs> letters to the editor. Yeah. And the one I want to pick out this morning actually gave props to the Salisbury Police Department. Uh, it was somebody saying that they had parked in a handicapped parking spot and they got a ticket for not having a placard on display. Well, it turns out they really were handicapped. So they went down to the police station with their documentation mm -hmm. and the ticket was taken back. And whoever this person was said, I told the captain I was glad to see the police patrol doing its job. Yeah. Because they were going out and they were checking the handicap parking spots. So, you know, a great fine letter giving props to the Salisbury cops. I oh, yeah, they deserve it. Good stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we want to say congratulations and help me with this name. Jessica Woolbright. Uh, Jess Jesse Lynn I was going to say, I, was I can say Jessica. Yeah, no, it's Jesse Lynn Woolbright. Jesse Lynn, okay. Um, she's a member of the Sussex County EMS. Mm -hmm. Great bunch of people. She's there in the center. Uh, she was honored at the Journal of American Medical Services EMS Today National Conference and Expo. It was in D.C. She's a bronze medal recipient as a member of the Sussex County EMS uh, GEMS team. GEMS is like uh, uh, Olympics for oh, paramedics. Okay, okay if that right, makes sense. Yeah. And there's two of her teammates there beside her, uh, uh, Andrew Vickers and, and Jill Wicks. So congratulations to you. That was a, a, an awesome honor to, yeah. to receive. And Absolutely. Boy, Another honor. Place. This is exciting. Did you hear? We have one of the best islands in the U.S. right here on Delmarva. She could made the top 10 list for best islands in the U.S. It was a, a list compiled by the world's largest travel site, Trip Advisor. They uh, announced the winners of its inaugural Traveler's Choice Islands Award. Shinkatig, by the way, number seven. And you can see nice. it through uh, Chopper 16 flying over. How about Shinkatig. that? Shinkatig. That is, that is. Uh, you know, it's, it's exciting. It's like, well, but now everyone's right gonna here. everyone's gonna come over to Shinkatig. <laughs> Just keep it clean when you leave. Yeah. While we're on the beach, uh -huh. let's talk about Ocean City. Uh, have you heard about the new petition that's out? This is, this is brilliant. I, I started laughing when I first saw this. The advertising agency for the town of Ocean City has started this petition for kids to sign to get school to start after Labor Day. What the, what the deal is... <laughs> I'm sure they had to twist their arms. They had to, yeah. Um, they've actually come up with a fake newspaper ad telling, encouraging kids to beg their parents to sign the petition. 
Oh, gotcha. Okay. Now, okay. you got to remember, this is a fake thing all the way around, but mm -hmm. I thought it was absolutely hilarious. Um, this is one of the things the petition is supposed to say. The government is stealing your fun. It hasn't always been this way. Your parents and their parents before them spent the final days of August in the fresh air of Ocean City. They enjoyed one last gulp of freedom before putting their noses to the grindstone. Oh, no. And also in the, in the ad, it says something about skee-ball deprivation could pose a problem, and a generation is not going to grow up without the time to fully master the boogie board. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I just thought this was great. Well, apparently... As funny as I thought it was, uh -huh. um, the the town council is going to look at it again, right? Because not everybody thought it was funny. They thought it was dabbling in politics now, trying uh -oh. to push school to after labor. Day. Well, there is a push. I mean, there that aside, there is a push to get a school start after Labor Day because they need the kids. They right. need them down there to work. Yeah. more than yeah, yeah, anything. Yeah. And a lot of employees down there, a lot of uh, uh, beach patrol members, are teachers. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, so, so it's, it, it it's economic as around. well. That's not exactly the slant they're putting on it with the petition, <laughs> but I thought it was great. Whatever works, okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> have you ever heard of jazz? legend Jimmy Heath. I'll be honest, I have not heard of Jimmy Heath. Uh-huh. But but you probably heard of all the people he has been had played with in his long career. 86-year-old uh, Jimmy Heath, he's a Philadelphia native. He's played alongside fellow giants from Dizzy Gillespie uh -huh. to Miles uh, Davis uh -huh. to Chet Baker. Uh -huh. He's going to join the UMES Jazz Ensemble tonight. Really? Tonight, yes. Here's the information. It's 7 p.m. at the Ella Fitzgerald Center. General public admission is $10 for uh, $10. Students with an ID, $3. If you want some more information, there's a the number 410-651-6571. I think it's going to be a great show. You can buy tickets at the door again tonight at 7 p.m. And anyone on that level of expertise mm -hmm. is, oh, don't miss your chance this Right, event. right. Um, you know, there are those of us who, who dread that walk um, from the couch to the refrigerator and back again. Well, that's why you have kids. Exactly. <laughs> but then there's people like this guy. This is Jack Vassilotti. Jack is 61 years old. Jack is retired, and Jack lives in Lewis. And Jack believes in the programs for the children at the Sussex County YMCA so much he actually walked the width of Delaware yesterday. Oh, wow. The from widest width? The widest width from <laughs> one side to the other. He is okay. also chairman of its Strong Kids campaign. Uh, they raised like $100,000 annually to provide financial assistance for underprivileged kids to participate in the nonprofit's youth activities. Walked the width of Delaware. Good for him. Wonderful. Is wow. he going to take Maryland now? <laughs> That's a, that'd be a long walk. Not that we're giving you a hint or anything, Jack, but it's not that much farther. Oh. So from Delaware to <laughs> go over to Kent Island, you'll be good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, the National Park Service, speaking of walking, has announced more than $2.5 million in grants to ensure preservation of some of these uh, battlefields, uh, Civil War battlefields, some are in Virginia, some are in West Virginia. Yeah. And the Civil War Trust is rolling out its latest in a series of battle apps for smartphones, you guessed it. Okay, really? the Appomattox Battle App culminates with the surrender of the Army of Northern Virginia on April 9th, 1865. Oh, so basically, goodness. okay, so here, here, here's an example. Like w when we go to um, Gettysburg, we, we have these uh, CDs, you know, you can listen to the tour, you can drive around, listen to the tours. Right. I guess this would be a way you could do it with your, on, on your phone. On your phone. You can, um, you know, find out the information about the spot that you're in. Isn't that clever? That, it's amazing. I'll be honest with you. Growing up, I was never really a history fan, a history buff. Right, civil me neither. War and all that kind of stuff. But I'm getting more and more interested in it. Isn't that funny? And I find this fascinating, and it's a great way to get the kids involved because it's on their level of technology. Right, this right. This is what they do. I hated history as a kid. I, I failed history in high school. I, you know what we had to do? We had these things, I guess, and I'm just I'm trying to... It was about like this, uh -huh. and you open it up. It had all these pages that you actually had to turn. <gasps> No, Unbelievable. Jimmy. See, it's no wonder. It was no big They have support groups for those. Do they? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, electronics, it's great. <laughs> um, the public meeting in Georgetown, by the way, just now wrapping up, just want to mention this real quick. Uh, they had a public meeting, started at 2 o'clock this afternoon, I think it was, uh, trying to come up with some ideas how they could mm -hmm. better utilize the Stokely Center in Georgetown. they got like 750 acres out there. Um, it's a state land. It's a 50-bed skilled nursing facility. Uh, they've got uh, residences for Delawareans with developmental disabilities. And last year, the Stokely Center initiative
began by inviting suggestions for potential uses of the center, with more than 100 people offering more than 275 suggestions. Wow. So don't know anything yet. They just wrapped up the meeting just mm -hmm. a few minutes ago, and, and hopefully we'll hear something more and right. see, uh, see which way that's, right. that's going. Hey, I want to apologize in advance to everyone, because I'm getting ready to plant an earworm. An earworm. Without even singing the song. Wait a minute, define an earworm real quick. Um, well, here, I'll give you an example. The song, It's a Small World After All. Now I'm going to hear that all day long, and that's what an earworm is. Okay. Exactly. All right. All right. Exactly. I got you. So anyway, if you've been to Disney World or Disneyland, you probably have been on "It's a Small World After All" or "It's, it's a Small World" ride. Right. Right. Well, it turns out that in 2009, the ride in Disneyland in California broke down with people on it. Right. Okay. Among them was a man who is disabled. They could not get off the ride. They could not turn off the music. So they sat there for 30 minutes listening to the song over and over and over and over That's again. An That's an earworm. Here's the kicker. The man, the disabled man, right. just won a lawsuit and has been awarded $8,000 for that incident. For having to listen to that song well, over and over again? Well, there's a little bit more to it. Uh, he's disabled. He, uh, he relies so he on a... he take care of... He, yeah, he relies on a wheelchair. But uh, lawyers say half the money was for pain and suffering, the other half for a violation of disability law. So there you go. Hmm. Now, what are you singing in your head? Don't sing it out loud! See? See? Now you got it. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to get rid of this all day long. No, no. So can I sue for that? Anyway. Um, <laughs> Don't <here's>... sue me! <laughs> Here is something, uh, if you've got the van, if you've got the kids, you're going to love this. Uh, uh, they, they say it's an auto option that really sucks. <laughs> I'm sorry, let me explain. Kimmy! Hi, well, let me My explain. kids are not allowed to say that, neither take, are you. Take a look at this, okay? This is, the Honda is offering a built-in vacuum cleaner. Ah, They're calling it the Honda Vac. Uh, they're it putting sucks. It, it's 2014 Odyssey Mini Man. See, that wasn't so bad now, right? Mm. Um, the redesigned kid hauler is uh, it was unveiled last evening uh, just before the New York Auto Show and it's exactly what it sounds like. Uh, Honda officials say they've got a mobile vacuum cleaner that's in there so you know when the kids drop the candy or crackers or whatever the case may be. Or whatever. And you're done. Right. Uh, and apparently the idea came from the daughter of a Honda engineer because she saw how frustrated dad got trying to clean up the car after the kids. <laughs> so that's supposed to come out next year. And well, you know, I have a Honda Odyssey. It's it's old. Oh, you've got one. I, I have a Honda, a Honda Odyssey. They must have seen mine, too, and said, yeah, we need to put a vacuum cleaner in this thing. <laughs> Here, you can use this. <laughs> okay, so, we all know the saying goes, yeah. like father, like son. Okay. Some of us wonder if the saying could go, like mother, like daughter. Where are you going? You decide. <laughs> Oh my goodness. She's got a lot to say. <laughs> How adorable. And she's still going. And she's still going, that poor girl. <laughs> when she grows up. And dad being a smart dad just sitting there nodding mm -hmm. and listening too. You're, you're absolutely right, sweetheart. Whatever you say, honey. <laughs> Whatever you say. Well, still to come on Dub Arbor Live here on the Eastern Shore, many of us love our crab. And we've all tried the classic crab dip, but today we're changing it up a bit. We're in the kitchen making a cold crab dip with an Italian twist. And there are so many feral cats roaming Delmarva. A little bit later on, we're going to share with you how one local organization is trying to control the problem and find out how you can help. But next, so many questions remain unanswered in the Accomack County arsons. Tonight, WBOC will dedicate its 7 p.m. broadcast to the story. Steve Hammond joins us next to tell us more. We'll be right back. Delmarva Life is brought to you by Sussex County Federal Credit Union, guiding you to your financial future. Peninsula Regional Medical Center, honored to serve the entire Delmarva Peninsula since 1897. Your local York and Mitsubishi dealers, and State Farm Insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. 